Today's video has a $50 giveaway, so if you want a chance at winning that, then make sure to comment your in-game name below in the comment section. And if you want to play Deflect for yourself, make sure to click the link in the description in order to join their Discord channel, and then you can install the game from there. So here we are, finally after hyping up this update for weeks, I'm now able to actually show you guys the brand new Netherworld update. This just went live about an hour or two ago, and I want to walk you through every single thing that's changed. So we're going to take a look at all of the brand new art as you can see I'm wearing the full seekers set right now and I will be showing you other things like brand new donated boxes brand new bosses and of course the brand new nether world raid I believe it's called so yeah there's gonna be a bunch going on in this video I'm just gonna run you guys through the entire update so you don't miss anything I'm gonna go to the discord and go through the patch notes but of course I want to show you some of the damage against the combat dummy my prestige is 30 and I have every single perk unlocked and all of the damage boosters so this is what you're gonna expect when using rain and of course when using melee we're gonna be expecting the exact same numbers you see here I believe everything is set up perfectly here for all the damage boosters so these are the maximum numbers that you should be seeing and let's go ahead and throw on the seeker staff and whack it one time let's put on blood barrage my bad let's go ahead and show off some damage here a lot of people have actually been pretty interested in seeing how the staff is going to compare to the advanced staff because magic has not been like the strongest in the world when it comes to recent updates but the seeker staff is definitely really solid it's not going to be as good as melee or ranged, but it's definitely a huge upgrade compared to the advanced staff. So let's go ahead and break this down into three separate segments. The first one is the Netherworld Raid. I'm going to go through all of this information, but we also have the Seeker Weapons and Armors, and we also have the Toro Boss. So I'm going to break down all three of these and kind of go through them one by one. First of all, the number one thing that you need to know for the Netherworld Raid is that there are some requirements. You have to have at least one advanced weapon and also 50 advanced raid cases. See. That's definitely going to be a little bit of a roadblock for some of the newer players, but most people will be able to pull that off. So that's not that big of a requirement, I would say. There's also a shop that can offer you some perks, which makes your Netherworld raid grind a little bit easier. We have the Netherworld minimum damage perks here for melee, ranged, and magic. This basically makes it so that you always do a minimum of 10,000 damage with each combat style that you purchase it for. So when buying all of these perks for the Netherworld raid, you're always going to do 10,000 damage every single hit at the bare minimum of course you can do a lot more if you're strong enough but that's going to make it a lot quicker and more consistent and you can actually get rift crystals nirvana crystals and advanced crystals from this raid as well and there's even perks to help you get them at better rates you can get rift crystals at 1 and 200 nirvana crystals at 1 and 300 and advanced crystals at 1 and 400 to get to the raid all you have to do is colon colon what's the command um nether that's that's what it is i had to figure out what the name of this update was and right here we have the world seeker we can click on them and open up the shop and this is everything that you can get these are the minimum damage boosters for melee magic and range right here we also have those crystal boosters which are right here some of these items actually don't have a description or name yet they're just coming soon so i'm pretty interested to see what's going to be going on with those there's also the netherworld advanced damage and this makes it so that the advanced damage buff will work in nether world so some really nice quality of life and efficiency based perks here for us so yeah i'll go ahead and zoom out that way you can see the full lobby or waiting room whatever you want to call it this is where the netherworld raid is and you can enter through the portal here to start your own raid and of course if you're going to be going to do raids then you're definitely going to be wanting to get the seeker crystal drop as we've already discussed a little bit you can get advanced crystals nirvana crystals and rift crystals from the netherworld raid but you can also get seeker crystals which which is of course the new best crystal that everybody's going to want to get while doing this raid. There is also a Seeker's Safeguard, there's a Seeker's Soldier, a Seeker's Sharpshooter, and a Seeker's Sorcerer. And these are all used for creating new gear, new weapons, new armors, all that great stuff can be made with these items here. Now let's head back to the Discord and check out the Seeker's Crystal because there is some information you need to know about this item. If you want to get the crystal, there are three separate drop rates and they all revolve around your prestige. If you're at the 30th prestige and you've basically maxed out your prestiges the drop rate for the seeker crystal is 1 in 100 but if you're only at 15th to 29th for your prestige it's actually a 1 in 200 so that's a pretty big difference just from a few prestige levels and if you're under 15 prestiges it's going to be a 1 in 300 drop rate for the seeker crystal and those are some massive differences so on my main account I don't have any prestiges so honestly I won't be doing this raid until I get at least
least 15th prestige. Even at that point, I feel like it's better to just kind of take some time to get to the 30th prestige. I know it's a little bit expensive and time consuming, but a 1 in 200 drop rate compared to a 1 in 100 drop rate is obviously a big difference. It's twice as good or twice as bad, depending on how you look at it. Of course, towards the end of the video, I will be going to do some of the raids. I will complete some of them solo and with a team. I will show you a few kills, but I kind of want to move on to the armor because this is actually some good news. First of all, the maximum HP for this Seeker's armor set is 584. That's a massive difference compared to advanced armor. Of course, it's supposed to be. That's the whole point. However, let's say you want to get this armor set for yourself. It is definitely going to cost a pretty penny. I mean, you need 600 mil just in Smeckles to get this, and then you need two advanced sets, two riff sets. I actually think I could possibly pull this off within like a week or two on my main account, but I'll talk about all that more in my in debt series. I guess I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on my mindset. I actually saw these upgrades a little bit differently in my head. I thought I was going to need a lot of extra rift staffs and advanced staffs. All the weapons are kind of the exact same when it comes to the upgrades. You need two advanced weapons, two rift weapons, five seeker crystals, a hundred mil smeckles, and two seeker upgrade orbs. The only difference is that for melee, you need a seeker's soldier, and for range, you need a seeker's sharpshooter, and for magic, you need a seeker's sorcerer. So if you're someone like me who's been kind of ignoring Smeckle and not really getting the proper unlocks to rack up a bunch of Smeckle, you might not be too happy about that because you need a lot. Luckily, though, you can also just come over to the exchange, which I can't even show you because I'm on an Iron Man account, but you can just go to the trading post and buy Smeckles for about six to eight GP each. Also, something else I'd like to mention about the weapons is that when you hover over them, it does say that it is the best in slot melee magic or ranged weapon, but it also says it adds 7.5 percent critical damage oh i also forgot to show you guys the accessories like the cape the amulet the gloves boots and rings let's go ahead and take a look at those as well first of all for the cape you're gonna need a bunch of crystals you're gonna need a seeker safeguard only one seeker's upgrade orb and only 35 million smeckles so that one actually seems pretty reasonable i mean it's all reasonable of course it's super strong so no matter how much money you invest into this you're gonna be pretty happy with the results and the same goes for the amulet and i'm assuming the gloves and boots are gonna be similar to where you need just sets of two for the crystals. Yeah, so it all kind of revolves around the same stuff here. So yeah, if I was you, I'd start saving up on Smeckles and I'd start saving up my crystals. But now heading back to the Discord for the final time, we have the Toro boss. And this is a new donator boss and area that has been added to the game with unique keys that contain three rarities. We have a common Toro key, an uncommon Toro key, and a rare Toro key. And to get to the new Toro boss, all you have to do is type colon colon Toro and you're going to be teleported there. This is actually very similar to the Cat Queen. As you can see, there's a timer up top saying that we have about two hours of Toro time left. And that is because whenever people open high level boxes, this giant rat right here is attackable and you can just kill it off just like the cat queen and when that's dead it adds five minutes to the timer and while the timer is active you can kill these disciples it's basically the exact same thing as the cat queen the rates are all the same it's a one in 20 for a one dollar book so this is just another way to make money and it's nice because you don't need any crazy amount of perks or anything you can just come here and get free books whenever someone opens boxes and there's even this dungeon if you go all the way to the east you can enter into this dungeon and switch your floor that way when things get a bit too crowded here you can always just find a safe spot to kill these guys you're never gonna really have to worry about running out of space or someone crashing you you're always just gonna have a nice spot where you can sit here and kill disciples at a rapid pace as you can see so as i mentioned toro will spawn in every now and then whenever someone opens a high level box and you'll go ahead and attack them and get one of these keys right here which is a toro key once you get this key just head south you're gonna go into these tunnels over here and then head east and then there should be two chests over here one right there for an uncommon key and this one for a common key but if you're lucky enough to get a rare key then there is a third chest right over here it's kind of hidden at first i didn't realize it but yeah it's just right on over here i guess i don't technically have to open them up i could just show you the collection log but i'll open up a few just for funsies <laughs> of course you always you know whenever there's a key in your inventory you gotta use it now, the Turo key collection log is kind of crazy because you can get rift crystals and nirvana crystals from this as well so if 
if you've been struggling getting either Rift Crystals or Nirvana Crystals prior to this update, you're going to be in heaven because you should be able to get them a lot easier now. There's now a couple of different ways you can just get these crystals passively without going to their designated raid. And if you complete the collection log, you do get a cat box. So I would definitely make sure you get every single Toro kill you can. You're going to earn a lot of money from it. And if you're an Iron Man, it's going to be even better for you. And I'm sure you've all seen by now, there is a special box in my inventory. I actually have five of them, and that is the brand new Toro box. This right here is the new best in slot box. So I'm going to go ahead and open one up right now. I actually will just open up all five just for fun, and I'll show you guys what kind of rewards I get. But as you can see, I have already gotten a Rift Sword. That is incredible, and that is the best item I've ever gotten from a box. I'm just going to keep spinning this, and you can see all the items available. I just saw an advanced crystal, so you guys can get a lot of great rewards from these boxes. This is insane, actually. I'm going to get a Rift Armor Set right here. That's incredible. With three boxes, I got a Rift Longsword and a Rift Armor Set. That is insane. Also, by doing that, I did spawn in El Toro. So yeah, the boxes are incredible. I know I said earlier that we weren't going to be looking at the Discord anymore, but after opening up those boxes, I was just curious. So I came over to the Donator Deals tab, and I'm pretty impulsive. So I might just be buying some of these bundles. These Toro boxes are insane, and they can really help out my account. The best bundle is $400, which is like fucking expensive. I'm probably not going to get that, but it's definitely worth it if you have that kind of cash because you get seven Toro boxes and six cat boxes. That's insane. Plus you get an extra $1,200 in books. Oh God. Okay. I'm probably going to get one of these bundles at some point. One of the middle ones, one or 200 bucks because you know, I'm rich and shit. So I'll do that. <laughs> and there's actually a lot of other things that I want to mention when it comes to this update, but I've already talked about a lot of stuff. Let's just go ahead and start doing some of the raids. From what I heard, it's actually pretty difficult and there are mechanics involved. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Those of you who have seen me on a lot of servers know that I'm not the most mechanically talented player in the world. We're going to hop in and we're going to try. I'm going to enter solo. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, Melee first phase. All right. Oh, is this like Chad? Oh, what the hell? Okay, cool. Let's just let's live comment. Maybe. I don't know. I'm doing a fucking shit ton of damage. Is there I, I think there's something with these colors here that I got to Oh shit. Okay, 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 okay. Um okay. One minute. Hold on. I'm dead. Restore. There we go. Oh, I'm supposed to be over here, aren't I? Wait, dude. I actually have no idea what I'm doing. Wait, cut the clip. Oh, healers. Let's get rid of those guys. There's going to be some sort of skips that come out. I'm positive. Those coming soon things in the shop, those are going to be skips. What the hell? Can I not kill this guy? Why is he not dying? Oh, maybe I have to stand over here and do it. Yeah, I have no idea. I keep whacking people. Okay, yeah, so it looks like to kill the healers, you have to be on the correct tile. So blue is for magic, of course. Everybody knows that. And I'm actually able to damage the dimensional beast here that's healing the nether beast. So I'm assuming there's going to be healers that spawn up for the magic area here, the ranged area over there. And across the way is a melee area. I'm almost positive that's how it's going to work. There's also floor spawns here. As you can see, you want to make sure that you don't stand on those. You're going to take a bunch of damage. There's like four quadrants that like have lightning on them i don't know what triggers that or how to avoid it but in the future i'll make sure to put a more in-depth guide out on this this is literally my first time even seeing this so i'm assuming at some point you will be able to get the skips and dodges to avoid these four spawns and maybe even skip the um the minions that come and heal the nether beast all right we're on the range phase now it seems like i'm gonna finish off this kill without any other healers spawning in i probably just took a lot of damage right there yeah down to 200 hp there we go the first kill done i did not expect to survive that i thought i was gonna die let's go ahead and open up the seeker's chest do i get anything good i get a little bit of smeckle some blood money how fast was that kill that was three minutes and 37 seconds i'm gonna do a few more of these and try to get a faster kill time now that i know what's happening there we go that one was a one minute and 41 second kill so definitely quicker let's see if i get any loot divine keys interesting also it doesn't seem like you have to use like melee over here ranged over there and magic on the far end to kill the healers because i did just use range to kill the one over here close to the what i thought would be the melee side but it's actually pink so it's not red which doesn't you know pink's not melee blue is always magic range is always green so maybe this is like either one you can use over here ranged or magic again i'll have a little bit more of a in-depth guide later on but this is just like 
I'm, I'm winging it here, man. I want to go through this raid. I want to go through Nirvana and I want to go through Rift and see how big of a difference it is. Just for some context, me personally on my main account, these solos take me anywhere from 45 to 55 seconds usually. So let's see with this new upgraded armor and weapons and with all the perks and damage boosters, let's see how fast I can get through these raids. All right, so first solo kill attempt here at the advanced raid, and it is already on this melee phase. That is fantastic. Can I just spec it out right now? I just whacked it one time. Okay, so that was a nine second kill. Very long, very tedious raid, honestly, super tough. Now heading over to Nirvana, let's see how fast I can speed run this raid. This one actually takes a little bit longer because there's four rooms you have to get through, but luckily you can just use ranged and one hit everything with this gear setup. So the dragon is last up and that is going to be a 16 second kill. Let's see if I get a Nirvana crystal as a reward for all of my hard work and effort unfortunately not and of course i have to try out the dimensional rift as well i can't do a video showing off the new gear and weapons without doing a kill at the rift one hit fifty thousand damage it's dead eight second kill and that's only because it took me that long to walk up to it let's see if we can one hit it again that is going to be fifty-seven thousand. yep that's a one hit right there six second kill crystal no crystal all in all this update is absolutely insane and i'm gonna have a couple of episodes coming out throughout the next few days just talking about it because there is so much going on with it there's even more details i want to give you guys in later uploads i just can't fit everything into a single video but yeah a lot of good stuff coming out with this update man i am super excited to get my account built up a little bit stronger so i can take advantage of these new updates because obviously on my standard account i can't really afford to do any of this it is of course an end game update i mean i should have said that at the beginning but this is an update based for all of the true end game players but yeah i'm super excited i actually have some real solid content to grind towards in the future and since today is a special day because of the brand new update i will be giving away my 50 dollars in books as i always do but i'm gonna add something to that i'm gonna pick a second giveaway winner to win three toro boxes this is massive definitely comment your end game name below to try to win i know personally i'm gonna be extremely jealous of whoever wins this but for now a quick shout out to ace ace for winning my last episode's giveaway make sure you message me in game or through discord in order to claim your 50 dollars in books